all the white people are not racists. White people are land thieves, except for all the people who haven't stolen any land. Is that what you're saying? White people stole our land. Which white people? White people who came and settled here. 350 years ago? Yes. Do you think white people now are land thieves? When, yes. They remain land thieves. They remain land thieves. Yes. The land has not been returned into the hands of the rightful owners. For as long as you are in a possession of a stolen car, you remain a criminal. Let's use that analogy as a car. Now, a simple situation. An individual steals my car. They have a claim against me for returning that car, and I should be punished for stealing that car. Imagine that it's the father of the individual uh, who stole the car. And I'm not to do the same. You might say, well, there's a very close link here. You've got the car to your possession. You should return the car. But your case isn't like that. Your case is to go back 350 years ago and say, someone who looks like your grandfather, great, 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 great grandfather, stole land from someone who looks like my great, 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 great grandfather. And therefore, you today must pay it back. But now, must... I put it to you that that is not a ordinary sense of justice. But who pays reparation? Yes. Your Lordship, if we want to infuse legal argument as a proposition to the client, then I think it's only fair that there be a balance. So my learned friend must take the argument further. If he says if the father steals the car and gives it to his son, technically speaking, the father is a criminal. But as a matter of fact, the son himself is a criminal in possession of stolen property. So if he's going to make a little argument, he must take it to his natural conclusion, because it has an implication of what my client is suggesting. That if you remain in possession of stolen land, albeit that you steal it, you remain a criminal, albeit perhaps in a different form. And that's the proposition he's making. My friend appears to be testifying on behalf of witnesses to what his response is. I'm just pointing out to you, very simply, that what you're trying to do is attribute guilt Cross lines over 350 years, regardless of whether a particular piece of land was once dispossessed. Your claim is white people cannot be the rightful owners of land in this country, regardless of whether they bought the land, whether they are Americans who landed here yesterday. If they are white, they are not rightful owners of the land. And your claim is that the rightful owners of the land must be black people, regardless of whether they have any particular rights to that land. We have a restitution process in place. So. And Mr. Woods has given some evidence on how the restitution process works. It's very simple. The Constitution says, after 1913, if you can show that you were dispossessed, then you must buy the sell the land back, or you must receive restitution, in other words, in the form of financial compensation. And that process has been undergone. You are calling for something much more radical. In other words, instead of looking at the individual Mr. Party, Oppenheimer, say, please put the question to the witness and let the witness respond. Yeah, I'm also Otherwise, lost. you're going to be here until next year. Yes. Simple, simple question to you is, how do you justify holding someone today liable for crimes committed by someone else 350 years ago? There is a saying, there is a saying, there is a saying, there is a saying, I don't know how, how to say it in English. There will be an interpreter here. You cannot take a stolen car from your father and claim you are not a criminal. Let's, it remains let's, let's, a stolen let's, car. Let's give, let's give counsel an opportunity and I'll give it a shot. What he's saying is that uh, the children will be punished for the sins of their parents. Yes. So when you <clears throat> steal a car and you pass over the car, to the stolen car to your children, it makes that child a criminal as well because it's in possession of stolen goods. And that child passes that car or doesn't even pass that car. He sells that car to go and buy another car with the money of stolen goods. It remains a stolen good, the property you bought uh, with the money stolen, uh, I mean, got from a stolen uh, goods. You are in possession of stolen property. Return it, please. Your parents have left you a very bad name. And don't blame it on us. But I asked the question earlier. That's Reparations right are paid. I'm just talking right there. Why have the name that I have? Is that 
that my grandparents fled Nazi Germany and sought refuge in South Africa in the 30s to avoid extermination. Now the witnesses brought up my name and I, I will use the opportunity to respond to I never brought your name. I never so brought your name. Sorry, Mr. Oppenheimer, we can't get into debate with the witness. I've never brought your name. Perhaps, perhaps I have a solution to this. The witness testified at least three times yesterday that when he says you, I'm talking about your child. Three times. The second point is we get into a debate, and perhaps it's an opportune time for us to take a tea break as well. Yes, Mr. Oppenheimer. Uh, yes, I'm going to I want to ask to complete on this one. Are you completed on this question? Because I wouldn't want it to uh, take further time after tea. Yes, well then let's, let's finish the question. Yes. When you said your name, are you referring to my surname of Oppenheim? You see, if he's going to be personal with me like that, I'm going to take a big issue. I've never brought Oppenheimer's name. I don't even know his, his name. I don't know. I've, I've never, my lord, called him by name. I've always referred to him as you, you, and I clarified it that I'm referring to a client. When you said your name, what are you referring to? What do you mean? You testified now, your name. Now, what are you referring to? Your name, Oppenheimer. No, I'm asking you. I'm giving you an opportunity to explain what it is you mean. You said your name. Explain what you mean. If I can assist your lordship, yes. the witness today is struggling with the reference to your name. So the witness's testimony earlier was, your fathers, your parents have left you a bad name. Yes. And now witness perhaps now has okay. context of what is meant to the first day as well. Yes, my lord, when I say your name, I mean them as white people. Your parents have left you a bad name. So that is the context I'm using it. So please, if you are going to be a legal representative, you are going to have to reduce yourself from this case individual as an individual remove your emotions and deal with me as a professional because if you are going to come to me as a personal person individually i will no longer look at you as a professional i will decisively deal with you as an individual let's, let's pause for a moment I, I think we're going to take a tea break but i think one of the difficulties in the challenge uh, in, in the questioning mr oppenheimer is this confusion that comes about the systematic issues and the individual issues. I think try and make sure that you stick to one of them at a particular time because they keep coming backwards and forward. At one stage it was a systematic problem about this position and then it then came to examples about stealing of motor vehicles by individuals and I think that's where the whole confusion comes up and then we end up in this whole uh, debate. So try and make sure that you draw that distinction in your yes, questions. Well, my, my point is that the, why this line of question is to show that what's been done is to hold individuals liable for the sins of their fathers, as the witness has testified. Um, and I, I appreciate the clarity of that when he says your name, he means the bad name of white people and does not refer to myself. And I, I take that I take it evidence as a respect. Okay. Okay. But my lord, I was interrupted here. Yes. on a point of reparations. We have seen countries paying reparations. Generations way after those crimes were committed to those nations. The current generation taking responsibility for the sins committed by generations <laughs> centuries ago. And that argument has never arisen. That no, why are you blaming us why are we the ones who are paying for the sins uh, of uh, uh, our parents? So this matter that why are we paying for the sins of our parents or grandparents as the current generation is neither here nor there. You have inherited the debt and you shall pay the debt. I understand the decision. I understand the decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll adjourn for tea. Court shall adjourn.